Hey there, welcome to Craft Central Designs. This is my weekly Dollar Tree item video, a relatively new feature on my channel. And this week, my challenge item is the 10 inch beaded ring from the Dollar Tree. I created three different DIYs using this beaded ring. These are easy and expensive and fun projects to create. Welcome back to my subscribers and to all visiting my channel today. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the content and share my video out with others and as well, leave your comments. I love receiving them. And of course, if you are not currently a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Okay, let me show you the three Dollar Tree item DIY projects for this week's challenge video. Let's look at the items for the uh, project number one. I'm going to be creating uh, this sign uh, with a 10 inch wood round. Uh, you can pick up a 10 inch wood round at the Dollar Tree. If you can't find it at the Dollar Tree, you can always pick it up at Hobby Lobby. They come in a three pack and every other week the uh, wood items are 40% off. But you should be able to find um, something to suffice at the Dollar Tree, even if it's just a... Um, 10 inch round sign that you can turn over and use the back. You may have to paint it, um, but you could paint this project as well. You could also stain this project with um, antiquing wax or a regular wood stain. You would have to stain the beads as well, of course, but there are a lot of options to these projects. So mine I just left natural. I have here some um, silk screen stencils that I've had for quite some time. I'm finally going to use them. They're in a sunflower um, theme, but as well, you could pick up something at the Dollar Tree to decorate your sign from the department where there are stickers and stencils and rub-on transfers. I'm going to be just creating uh, this sign. It's 10 inches, as I mentioned before. Um, and there are so many possibilities to creating this piece. You do you. I'm going to be putting a welcome on this sign with sticky letters um, that I keep on hand that I purchased at um, on Amazon.com. But you could as well pick up letters. Um, they actually have welcome sign in just the wood letters um, at the Dollar Tree. They have stencils. You could uh, word it by hand if you'd like. Or you don't have to put any word on at all. <laughs> That's up to you. But I know they have welcome letters and they have uh, letters that say home. And um, those both would fit on this 10 inch wood round. So I'm using silk screen um, stencils here. And when you use those type of stencils, you used a paste acrylic. Um, and it's just applied by using a type of spatula. I'm using a small spatula here but I'm doing the greenery separately, in case you're wondering what I'm doing here. Um, if you're not familiar with silk screen stencils, they're really awesome in that they come with a sticky back uh, that sticks right to your project, and you apply your acrylic paste, and you just peel it right off. But again, you could pick up something to suffice at the Dollar Tree. They have... Um, different selection of rub-on transfers and stencils. So I'm just creating a simple sunflower design using two different patterns here. And then I'm just going to put welcome and sticky letters down the center. Actually, this would have looked really good with um, the wood letters 
in home or welcome. I just didn't happen to have any on hand. I normally do, but uh, I didn't have any on hand. So I just used my uh, sticky letters that you see right there. I always have those on hand. I picked those up on Amazon. That's the Ray Dunn font. But I love having these on hand um, as opposed to taking out my Cricut and creating uh, the, the uh, word. This is just quick and easy for me when I'm, you know, I have time constraints. So um, you'll often see me using these uh, letters in my projects. I absolutely love them. They come in two different sizes in a packet, and I just think they're wonderful. They stick on your project really, really well. So I'm going to go ahead and put welcome on there across the center. And now I am going to go about gluing on that beaded ring. Now you're going to have to be sure it's shaped uh, well and round because it's going to fit right around the border of this 10 inch wood round. I'm going to use Aliens Techie Glue as opposed to hot glue. And I'm going to just place that um, beaded ring right on top of there. Now I did get my big clips out from um, the Dollar Tree. I love these clips. They're really very helpful. You'll see here in just a second. There we go. Um, they're very helpful at, in a lot of projects. So I would recommend you pick some of those up. They have large ones and small ones in the Crafter's Square section at the Dollar Tree. Now notice I have the closure of my beaded ring at the top of my piece because I'm going to be placing a small bow on there uh, and I can cover up that closure uh, with my uh, little bow just so it's not unsightly on the piece. Just, just be sure that you place that beaded ring on there like that. Now I'm placing my clips on there to be sure while that's drying that it stays in place. And this really helps uh, the process to keep everything intact while it's drying. Now, I hope you're um, thinking about if you would like to create this sign, how you would do your sign, how you could change it up. I'm just here for inspiration. You may have a whole other idea about how you want to do your sign. And that's what I'm hoping that um, you will feel inspired to do while you're watching this video. So I have uh, all of my clips on there. Now I'm just gonna create a quick little bow here. Now you could make your bow larger. You could use a 2.5 inch. You could use narrow ribbons. You could use a 1.5 inch. I'm just gonna suggest that if you use a 1.5 or a 2.5 inch ribbon, use a wired ribbon. These ribbons are narrow ribbons, so they're not wired. I'm just creating a simple figure eight bow. I do this often with narrow ribbons. And I'm just going to use three different ribbons for visual interest. One's a, both of the, um, the uh, top ribbons that are on the, toward the top of the bow are of a burlap color. This, ha this uh, sign to me is very farmhouse -y, kind of rustic -y, country ish. <laughs> that's a word. Um, so I'm just creating um, this piece with a gingham check bow with the black, just to pick up the black in the lettering. And I'm just creating figure eight bows, three of them, which I'm going to stack on top of one another and use a little piece of a pipe cleaner to p attach them all together. After I do that, I'm just going to take a little piece of one of those ribbons and wrap it around the center just to give that bow a nice little finish. 
and then I'm going to simply attach it to the top of the sign. I'll use um, hot glue there. Now you can see I'm just wrapping that around to finish the center of that bow. And I'm going to, uh, I first thought I was just going to use a, a twine uh, hanger and then I changed my mind. Not surprising. I do that a lot when I'm creating a project. But so I first put this on. But if you want to just use a twine uh, hanger. That's easy. You just feed it around that wire closure piece there at the top. Put a dab of glue on there to hold it and you have a hanger. Now I decided um, after I put the bow on, I decided I wanted to have a beaded hanger, which is so easy to do as well. I'm going to just do some hot glue to place that bow on there and I want to place it so that I'm covering up that wire closure of that beaded ring as much as possible. This way the piece looks finished and very tidy. Now for my beaded ring I'm just going to use that same jute twine, which I always pick up that up at the Dollar Tree. Now, while the Dollar Tree is not a craft store per se, it is, uh, they do have the crafter square section where you can pick up um, different types of materials that are helpful in uh, crafting. But sometimes you have to step outside of the Dollar Tree box, so to speak, and go to a craft store because they don't have everything. But they have a lot. So I pick up what I can and I let you know what those items are that are available at the Dollar Tree. Now you can pick up narrow ribbons at the Dollar Tree. They have plenty of them. Especially that gingham check, you could definitely pick that up at the Dollar Tree. Now, I created a little uh, beaded uh, hanger. I believe I have eight beads on there. And I just tie a couple of knots to hold the beads to keep them from sliding down. And then I'm just going to feed that um, jute cord in between the beads in that um, beaded ring. Pull them through, back through the beaded ring, and then I put a dab of glue just to secure them. And I think that looks, uh, I think that looks better with the um, beaded uh, hanger. Okay, on to project number two. Now, did you know that you could take this ten-inch beaded ring and create a rag wreath? Now they do have fabric at the Dollar Tree, and I have one right there on the table in the sunflower print, but they have other prints as well. I mean, you do you. I just did this one in the sunflower print. I added a little bit of white in there, which you can do or not do, uh, it's up to you. Now, my um, fabric there, I got it 40% off at Hobby Lobby. I just preferred that sunflower print, but again, they have these fabrics, um, in little rolls, as you can see there, um, at the Dollar Tree. So what I'm going to be doing is just tearing strips of fabric and creating a rag wreath. And all you have to do is simply do um, a tying maneuver on that beaded ring. I'm gonna show you that here in a second. I cut my strips of fabric in 13 inch long pieces and two inches wide. That's just a piece of um, fabric that I picked up at Walmart. Now I just cut slits in my fabric at two inches wide and then I just tear the strips of fabric. 
and then I cut those strips of fabric in 13 inch long pieces. Now, when you tear your fabric, you're going to have strings, but, uh, and you're also going to have a little bit of frayed ends, that's, or edges, that's um, perfectly fine for a rag wreath. Now, when you, you'll notice as well, when you tear your strips, that you're going to have, it's kind of be ripply on the edges. I prefer to iron mine out after I tear them. That's up to you. And also sometimes from folding the fabric, you're gonna have wrinkles in the fabric and that, that kind of drives me a little bit crazy <laughs> on a project. So I take my iron out and iron out any of those creases in the fabric. But for my tear, um, the pieces that I tear, I also press those. It takes only minutes to do that. And it gives you a little bit of more of a, uh, a neater appearance to your fabric. Now what you're going to do is fold your fabric in half. Like so, then you're gonna pinch it at the place that you folded it in half, lay a loop across the top of your ring and then bring it around the bottom, pull it through the loop and then place it on your beads. Before I pull it tight, I placed it snugly on the bead before I pulled it tight. See, now I know it's on there well. Now, the um, amount of space that each piece of fabric takes up on the beaded ring, it's around two beads per piece. And I believe there's 48 beads on that um, beaded ring. So if you do every two, it's around 24 pieces of fabric, something like that. Just keep going around your beaded ring until it's all full. And again, I don't pull my fabric tight until I actually have it arranged around the beads. So I just go around the entire uh, beaded ring, placing on my fabric strips. Now, it doesn't take that long to do this. You just tear, I'm going to show you one more time. You fold the fabric in half, pinch it at the half mark, lay the loop over the top of the beaded ring, feed your material underneath the beaded ring and bring it up through that loop and just give it a little pull. Arrange it around the beads before you pull it tightly. Now your fabric pieces might be a little uneven after you apply them all on there, but we go around and trim everything up after everything's all applied. This is very, very easy to do. If you like a, a simple, very cute rag wreath, this is very, very easy to do. I am a lover of sunflowers, so I just chose a sunflower fabric print for mine, but you could go with a gingham check a buffalo check, a floral um, fabric. You could even do a soft burlap fabric. It's up to you. So um, I decided uh, that to um, have the best uh, look to this wreath when you place it on a wall so that the fabric doesn't flop over on the top. I determined that around three and a half inches for those pieces of fabric all around the wreath is the best um, is the best length to have for this wreath. So I cut everything around three and a half inches from the uh, knot to the end of the fabric is around three and a half inches, not including the knot, but the tails, the tails of the fabric. So I go around and trim everything up to three and a half inches. And here's my dog 
Uh, and she got all the trimmings. Look how precious she is. <laughs> Poor thing. She's always underneath my uh, craft table and she's always getting a, a, a lot of trimmings and uh, pieces of this and that <laughs> falling on her head. And she insists on laying under there under my feet. And so I trip on her often when I get up from the table, but I just love her. She's so precious. That's Savannah, my uh, Labradoodle. And there she is, speaking of. <laughs> okay, so for the back of, I turned my wreath over on the back. And now what I'm doing here is I just took a piece of burlap ribbon. You could use a piece of fabric, a piece of burlap ribbon, or another type of ribbon. Um, what I'm doing here is just creating something that I can attach my sunflowers that are kind of kind of be cradled in the bottom of that wreath. So I need something to um, kind of hold them on there uh, in addition to, of course, some glue. So I'm just using some hot glue and just applying uh, a piece of that white burlap ribbon. And I'm using my little tool from the crafter's square section. Actually, it's from the makeup section. It's a silicone um, something for makeup. I don't know. I've never used one for that. But um, <laughs> so anyway, so I put a couple of pieces on there because my sunflowers are, you know, pretty big. And I wanted to be sure I had enough. And I ended up cutting that down just a little bit in the end. But um, I needed to be sure that I had enough so that my sunflowers uh, stayed uh, toward the front of that wreath and didn't fall behind. If that makes any sense, it will here in just a second. But this again is on the back of my wreath and fabric. Um, those, the, the fabric and that burlap ribbon just hold beautifully with um, hot glue. I always use Gorilla Hot Glue. To me, that's the very best glue. I just trimmed that up a little bit to make it tidy. And I'm gonna flip the, the uh, wreath over. And you can see I created like a little palette for my sunflowers. Now you're gonna have a lot of strings because of uh, tearing that fabric. Just go around and snip them off. No big deal. So now I have three sunflowers, two open bloom sunflowers. And then I have that other one uh, right there in the center. I just love the look of that. That is so pretty. And then a couple of little sprigs of greenery that came with the sunflower bush. I got my sunflowers at Hobby Lobby every other week. They're 40% off, but they do have sunflowers at the Dollar Tree, as well as other florals if you wanted to create this piece um, with different florals. Now I'm going to use Aliens Tacky Glue and Hot Glue, and I'm just going to arrange my flowers and then glue them right down to that burlap ribbon that I created the little palette on the back. Now to hang my wreath, I'm just going to use a little bit of um, burlap twine, wrap it around the wreath ring, and that piece is finished. Very quick and easy. Now this probably is my favorite. It's the most simple, but I just love it. I have here some um, greenery. It's kind of a sagey green. I love the color of it with those fall florals, which I picked up at Hobby Lobby at 40% off, but they do have uh, the fall uh, florals and at the Dollar Tree. So if you want to create this for fall, but this piece actually is kind of versatile the way I created it, because you could use it for a farmhouse year round if you wanted to, or rustic or more of a country look. I'm going to be creating a small um, bow for this wreath. And I'm using a burlap striped ribbon. I believe this was from Michael's. 
but they do have uh, ribbons. They have burlap ribbons as well at the Dollar Tree. So you could pick up ribbons there if you like. So I'm just going to create a four loop bow. I'm keeping it small. I want to say my loops are probably around four inches uh, in length, the ribbon that I use to create each loop. And I just put one single loop right down the center. I do have bow tutorials if you would like to learn how to make bows like I do. I'm going to cut my tails off. And I will trim them up later after I get it on the wreath. I take that tail on the top, pull it through that center loop, match it up with the one on the bottom. That ribbon had a little bit of a wrinkle in it that just annoys me like crazy when I have that happen. But I did end up fixing that because I have bow remedies like nobody's business. <laughs> I put a different tail on it. I didn't show you that part, but uh, I have a lot of remedies for bow situations. So uh, I, I fixed that. Okay, so now what I'm, go what I'm going to do, if I can speak properly is create like a little swag off of the wreath. I'm not going to create this on the wreath. I'm creating it separately because then I'm just going to wire the whole piece on the bottom of the wreath. Now, remember, this is a beaded ring. It's not that sturdy. So you want to create your floral piece off the wreath and then place it on there. You're going to wire it and then glue it. So I'm taking, uh, I created like a little uh, base to my swag with that beautiful sage colored um, greenery. I think that looks beautiful with fall florals. And then I'm going to just place around that, I call it a little swag that's going to go on there. Um, just my florals um, from the um, autumn floral department um, at Hobby Lobby. Again, 40% off on all those florals right now. But I believe they have some similar florals of this nature currently at the Dollar Tree. Again, you might not even want to do uh, something that looks more um, kind of autumnish, if that's a word. <laughs> I don't think it is, but uh, maybe you want to do something more floral um, with flowers. So that's up to you. I'm doing my piece this way. Now this little 10 inch wreath is very cute um, on a door, but also in just a, maybe a space in the kitchen with a narrow wall. Um, it, just, it just makes a really cute uh, decorative piece. Maybe on a patio. Okay, so I'm putting in all of my florals. Now, you notice that I wired together, uh, I don't think I mentioned that, that greenery piece on the very bottom, the base, and then I'm just applying everything to that greenery piece. Just by sticking those autumn florals into the greenery, and then what you're going to see me do is take a piece of wire. It's a little bit of a heavier wire, but you could as well just use a pipe cleaner. And I'm just going to collect everything together, wire it all together there in the center. And uh, this works like a charm. So I take my wire, wrap it around the center, twist my wire in the back, snip off any excess. Now, if you get your piece of uh, collected florals on the wreath and you want to add anything to it, you certainly still can do that once you apply it to that beaded ring. Now, I'm going to place that at the area where that closure is. I want to hide that on that wreath ring. So I'm going to take another piece of wire, and this is very easy to do wrap it, the wire around that wreath frame. I stick it in between one of the beads, get it as tight on there as I possibly can, 
trim off the excess, and then I am going to go around underneath because I want my florals to sit on there nicely, and I want them to be to be more um, kind of cradled in the bottom of that beaded ring. So I'm going to go around with um, a hot glue gun, and you can also add a little bit of Aliens Techie Glue if this wreath is going to be on the outside and you're concerned about the heat. Then I'm going to take my bow, take my pipe cleaner tails, wrap it around that beaded ring, pull it tightly, twist it in the back. And this was the simplest little wreath to make, but just oh so pretty. I'm just arranging my tails, trimming them up a bit. I angle my tails there and just arrange everything on that wreath. Now for the hanger, um, I just used, um, I'm showing you here that I applying the glue to the back. And then for the hanger, as I started to say, um, I believe I just used a piece of jute twine. Yes, I did. So I'm going to find the center point, pull that after I make a knot at the top, leaving about a, maybe a two and a half inch, an inch hanger. And then I just pull it through, pull it tight with the knot in the back, and I take a bit of hot glue, stick it in between the two beads, press that together, and my hanger is secure. And then I trim off the excess, and that's the um, conclusion of DIY number three. Isn't it pretty? It's just so simple and so pretty. So you can see those uh, beaded rings have some versatility in how you can create some very pretty little wreaths for your home or for a gift. And there we have our sign. Again, this piece, so much versatility. You do you. And the um, rag wreath. So these are three very pretty pieces. I hope you feel inspired. Remember to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and until next time, you all take care.